Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and Unity 2020.2 has just released. This is the latest text stream release. If you're not familiar with how Unity versions work, check out my quick video on it. Basically, you have tech and LTS. Ideally, you should be using the LTS version for all of your projects. That's what I do, so from now on, I'm mainly going to be using 21 LTS. However, it's always fun to look at the text stream to see what's coming in the future, so let's see what features this one has. There's a bunch of productivity and performance improvements, there's material variants, splines, and much more. Also, by the way, one quick mention, you might have noticed fewer videos these past few weeks. The reason for that is because I'm hard at work trying to finish my turn-based strategy course. It's coming along great, I'm really happy with the final game and the quality of the code, although it has been a lot more work than I thought, which is taking longer than expected. And this is actually relevant to the topic on this video. For the course, I won't be building the game using 22.1, the reason for that is to keep the course up to date for as long as possible. So if you're interested in learning how to make a turn-based strategy game and writing some good high quality code, then check the link in the description and sign up to be notified when it's out. Hopefully it's within a few weeks. Okay, so let's see what's new in 22.1. You can download the version from Unity Hub. On the website, you can see a huge changelog detailing all of the various nodes, all of the individual's additions and fixes and so on. And there's also a nice page showing some various highlights. So let's first go through these highlights, and then after that I'm going to do some of my own highlights that I found in this huge changelog. Starting off, one of the main things is several productivity enhancements, making it faster to enter play mode. There's no mention specifically how much faster, but any speed up is always appreciated. Then asset importing is also faster, so in general the editor should be snappier and faster and easier to iterate and work with. The package manager also got some nice improvements. For example, one of them is multi-selection, so you can select multiple packages and sell them all at once. Then another nice interesting change is an option to change the location of the cache for both the packages and the assets. So if you click on the gear icon and go into preferences, then over here you've got the location of both packages and the assets. This can be super useful for people who don't have a lot of space on their main drive, so just go ahead, swap these out for a different drive and you free up tons more space. Then back to the highlights, another big one is visual search queries. This is this tool for very easily searching for just about anything. In order to open it, you can go into edit and then search all, or use the shortcut control K. And it opens up this window and shows tons of things that you can search for. You can search everywhere, just in the project files, just in this hierarchy. You can even search in the menu, settings, files, and so on. So for example, let's search on the hierarchy for anything with a mesh render. Here it is, tons of things. Then let's say just looking for cars. And there you go, here's a taxi car, and there you go, right here on the main. Then you can modify all these, so search for any component on the hierarchy project and so on and you can even save searches. So you just save a search and then you can find it again anytime you want. So this is a really powerful tool for finding just about anything in your project, in your assets, packages, and literally anything. Then 2D also got tons of upgrades. Now I haven't used many of these 2D specific tools in quite some time, so I'm not sure exactly what changed, but improvements to Sprite Shape, DPSD Importer, Sprite Atlas, and so on. So now in this section, lots of tiny things to help you make better games faster. Then the next big session, this one is on editor tools. The first one that you can see right here on the screenshot is the spline tool. Now I made my own spline class in a previous video. Go watch that if you're interested in seeing how the math behind it works. There's also plenty of assets on the asset store to build splines, but having a proper fully featured native tool is always great. For this one you install it from the package manager. Just scroll down and find the splines package. Then you're seen, you can just right click, create a new 3D object, go into spline and you've got these options. So you can choose a preset shape or something to draw. Then you can click to place down any shape. You can make solid angles or you can click and drag in order to make some really nice curvy splines. Now this tool in this version actually has an extra tool over here on the side. So if you just deselect everything, then this is a spline that exists in the world, then you click to select it. In order to edit it, you have to click on this button. Then over here you can now select each point, move it anywhere, rotate it, do anything. You can also select an individual knot, then click on this button and here modify all the properties, modify how the interactions work. And there's also this menu for not placing, so you can click on it and now you can click anywhere and place anymore, then go back to the move tool, move it and so on. On the package manager, you can also download some samples. And for example, here's one just extruding a certain mesh, so kind of like a road. Then this one shows objects following a spline and so on. So that's the spline tool, it's really well made. I really wish this one was available in 21 LTS, but I guess I'll have to wait a year before I start really using this one. Then the next big editor tool is UI Toolkit. Now this one is meant for both editor and runtime UI. It's meant to be just a single tool that you can use to build both editor tools and regular game UI. I've actually recently been doing some research on this topic, so I'm hoping to do a video on it sometime soon. 
It looks quite complex when you first look at it, due to the fact that it uses some style sheets, and the whole thing is very different from regular game objects, but after you learn the basics, it's actually pretty intuitive. In version 21 LTS, the UI toolkit is already available, and in version 22, it's getting more and more features. So more UI widgets, tree view, multi-column, property drawers, and so on. Since it's the same tool, that means if you learn how to use it nowadays, you will automatically know how to use it by the time 22 LTS comes out. Then they mentioned the Material API. This looks like some advanced rendering tool, so I'm not really familiar with it. And up next, down here, we've got some really interesting ones. We have something very simple but very useful, which are Material Variants. So these work just like prefab variants. You've got a base material, then you can create variants with certain overrides. So in the editor, we can just create a regular material, then just apply it to both these spheres, then right-click on this material, and now we can create a material variant, and apply the variant to this one, and now we can modify the variants. So for example, let's modify over here the base map color. Let's say put this one on the green, and we can see that one is being overridden from that one. Now if we add some emission on the base one, and if there I go, the variant also gets some emission. So really a super simple addition, but potentially very useful. And then some more performance insights. So this is an interesting one. There's a new frame timing manager to capture some more detailed stats on the GPU and frame view. And there's also a visible frame stats profiler on both the editor and play mode. You can see it by opening the rendering debugger. So going up into window, then analysis, then over here, the rendering debugger. And up here, you can see all of the various frame times, the frame rate, frame time, CPU, GPU, and so on. Or alternatively, while inside the game, you can press Ctrl Backspace and shows all those stats directly inside the game. Now, I wasn't familiar with this window, but apparently it's been around for quite some time. It's got lots of interesting stats to help you debug any rendering issues, and you can also play around the render modes. So for example, change the material override to only show the albedo, only show the alpha, the smoothness, and so on. You can even manually enable or disable post-processing, and you can play around all of the wireframe modes that you can see on the scene view. You can do it over here on the final game. So this is a really interesting option that I wasn't familiar with, but apparently it's been around for quite a bit. As long as you make a debug build, you can open this anywhere. So just control backspace and it shows and hides. And then as usual, we have some more platform optimizations. It really is easy to take for granted and forget just how awesome it is that Unity can make your games run on literally anything. You can make games for super high-end PCs to tiny and low-end mobile devices. And that really just continues to improve with every new version. There's a new package to get some more performance data from devices with ARM GPUs. There's a new version of Adaptive Performance. This one is a tool for keeping track of the device thermals in order to adjust quality to meet performance goals. And the incremental player build process. Yet another tool for fastly improving iteration times. So as you can see just from this page, quite a lot of interesting things in this new tech release. But these are just some highlights. The page with all the release notes is truly massive. Look at this, it never ends. So let's look at some interesting ones that I found here. On the line renderer, trail renderer, and particle system, they added some more texture options. So if you move around a trail render over here on the texture mode, you've got these new options. So you've got static. So that pretty much just copy paste the entire texture over and over again. And then you also got the texture sale. So you can play around with the size of that texture. So move it around, play around, make it quite a bit smaller to stretch it out. This works on the trail render, the line renderer, and the particle system. So you get more options to get exactly what you want. Then the input system got added support for the PS5 DualSense controllers on Mac and Windows. I still haven't picked up a PS5, so I'm not sure how the controllers feel, but I'd be curious to know if the whole rumble thing works with Unity. Then mono enable broadly compression. I believe this is the best compression of all, so just another nice tiny improvement. The undo system also got an enhanced UI so you can explore the undo history. So that's over here, if you go into edit, over here you've got the undo history and shows up this view with all of the various undo things. Then you can click and undo as many as you want. Then down here for version control got tons and tons of changes. As you might know, Unity recently bought the Plastic SEM package and apparently they're integrating it more and more into the engine. Visual scripting also got something called the high performance interpreter. This one is certainly an experimental package, but the goal is to make visual scripting much more performant. So that should be interesting. Next up, the asset pipeline, they clarify the behavior of resources.load in the scripting API. This is actually an interesting one. I believe previously this used to say that resources.load was not recommended and you should be using the addressables instead. But apparently nowadays that they change it, they no longer say that. And that does make sense because while addressables is indeed great, it is also much more complex. So for simple things, resource.load still works perfectly. It's something that I use in my Builder Defender course, and every once in a while I would get questions asking about addressables because the official documentation seemed to suggest that that was much better, but my answer was always the same thing. For simple things, this one still works great, so it's nice to see that the documentation now reflects that. 
Then here we do get some numbers for just how much faster it is. So importing smaller files is apparently now 65% faster, so that's nice. Then the editor also got some more game object pings in the hierarchy for a bunch more errors, like when clicking on console messages. So that's nice to be able to figure out which game object fired which log. Then Unity event callbacks can now be reordered. I don't use these normally, I normally just use regular C-sharp events. But if you do use them, then being able to reorder them sounds really useful. And after that, kind of funny one, here talking about the updated Unity logo in anticipation of the brand refresh on October 5th. So this was ages ago, but that really tells you just how much ahead of time they started working on these versions. So right now, maybe there's already a team working on version 23.1, working on the alpha. Then the line renderer and trail renderer gain support for sprite masks. Again, I haven't used the 2D tools in quite a while, but using sprite masks sounds like a really interesting thing. The particle systems can now choose whether the gravity modifier applies to 2D or 3D. I think this has to do with the fact if you modify the axis for the gravity in 2D, I think previously you would only use the 3D one, so not sure, but it sounds interesting. Then a general one on scene and game view, improved performance when selecting many objects, improved performance when using tons of gizmos and so on, so once again the editor is snappier and faster. Then Burst got support for system.span and the read-only span. These are C-sharp types that have pretty much no garbage. So if your game has issues with garbage collection, then make sure you try to use these, and apparently now they're usable inside of Burst. The editor also got some pen support. I guess this would be super useful if you're an artist constantly working with a pen instead of a mouse. Shader Graph got a sprite option on the main preview. So this is the same thing as the quad, but on the quad, if you click on the preview, you can rotate it, whereas with the sprite, that makes no sense, so this now works. Also added a motion vector render pass to URP. Motion vectors are used in tons of interesting effects. And they also added two new URP specific templates. So one of them just with a basic camera and the light, and another one which also has a global volume and a basic post-processing effect. So this standard one should be great for just starting up Unity and everything already looks quite a bit better. Then some more changes on Burst, making things quite a bit faster, so 33 times faster and 13 times faster. So constantly improving performance on just about anything. And there's tons, tons more. All right, so those are a bunch more highlights from this release. Once again, my takeaway from any new Unity version is always the same. Unity is already awesome in the present, and looking at the future, it just keeps getting better. I definitely look forward to playing around with many of these new features when they hit LTS by next year. Although, like I've mentioned, I'm currently working on my turn-based strategy course, where I will be using this version in order to keep the course up to date for as long as possible. I've been really busy working on it for quite some time, that's why there have been fewer videos lately. It's coming along great, I'm really happy with the final game and the quality of the code. So if you're interested in learning how to make a game just like that, how to build a pretty complex game the right way, then check the link in the description and sign up. I'm really hoping to get it done by sometime the end of this month. Alright, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.